morning, morning. Yeah, so if you could maybe just call the guys outside, uh, let's start with the service. So what's the limit to the 130 people, I think? Eh? Yeah. How's that? Nice. So let's stand in faith for more people to stream in, eh, Pete? <laughs> All right. Guys, what a privilege. Eh? What a privilege just to step into God's presence again, step into his house again. I've got an expectation for what God is going to do. We never, ever come to church. You know, sometimes we fall in, but there's other people. Um, when I fall into church, I know there's always somebody else that has an expectation. Isn't that great? That's the way the body works. All right? So today, today I want to say to you, if you have fallen into the church, that's good because I have expectation. And there's many others here that do have expectation for God to do something. I do believe we step into that era in the church where God is doing stuff again. We're not... Um, we're not a junior church anymore. We're moving to a senior church <laughs> where we have expectancy for God to move and change. Every time, every time we get into his presence, he changes us. Really now, this is not just rhetoric, um, things that we just say because as Christianese, I do believe a line in the sand has been drawn. And we are moving forward. There's no turning back, which is a good thing. We don't want to turn back, do we? Hey? We want to go where God wants us now on this planet. And we know it's needed. That's kind of obvious, isn't it? All right, so I want you ready to start, have you start stirring your hearts for what God's going to do in your lives personally and in the body of Christ, just here today. All right, just one, um, just one announcement. Ham and the, well, the Stevensons are not here today. They are ministering in Valley Church, so they are sending their greetings. Um, like Paul said, they're here in spirit, but it's fantastic that they're just ministering and giving what we have here. They're ministering there today. All right, so they send their regards, they send their blessings. Um, yeah, that's where they are today. No other announcements, I think. All right? Okay. So what I want to do for us, just before we start with the services, if you guys can just start picking. <laughs> Thanks. Let's get into God. Let's just become quiet a little bit. And allow Holy Spirit to start moving and just permeating this place. Just by faith. All the way. Just allow Him to permeate your heart. Just bring your heart and your mind to rest now. And then when you've done that, just turn your heart to Jesus. Because it is all about Him, isn't it? It's about Him. Thank you, Father. So, Father, as your children, we want to step into your presence now. Lord, and even if we struggle, Lord, we want to do that. Oh, God, we want to do that. We want to declare, Father, that it is all about you. And it's about your son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> about his glory. About his greatness. And it's about who he is. So we want to humble ourselves before you, Lord. Bring ourselves before you, Lord. And bow before you. And declare that it's all about you. Do we want to position ourselves, Lord. And I, guys, I just want to ask you to do that. Just in faith and in the Spirit, position yourselves before the throne room of the living God. Thank you, Lord, that we are spirit. That is who we are. We are spirit first. So in our spirit, man, we position ourselves before you. Thank you, Lord. Would you come and wash over us, Lord? Wash through us, Lord. And bring your truth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. All right, let's just flow into worship now. And let's see what the Holy Spirit is going to do in the rest of the meeting.
you've set us free from all fear, free to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord.
church, let's sing it. people let's do that let's get our bodies and our minds and our, let's apply our walls and let's start praising God all right let's praise God for a breakthrough let's do that let's get our bodies in motion get, get our minds in motion get our wills in motion to praise the living God all right I want to call you to do that I want to call you to do that all right let's spend some energy in doing that we want to touch God we want to break through so let's do that Helen you want to say something I want to ask you a question. Who here has cried this week? You can stick up your hands. Who here has faced death in some form over the last month? Who has felt mourning or sadness? We've all been touched because we live in this world. I'm going to read to you from Revelation, and this is the hope that we're looking forward to. And as I read it, I want you to listen, and I want you to to picture what you see and what you're going to see, because this is what we hold on to. It's our hope, because Jesus died on the cross, this is what we can look forward to. We live in the now, we live in this place where there's this jumble of emotion. We We have the spiritual realm, but we live in the physical and we all deal with the flesh. But we want to break through and we want to worship the Lord our God who has given us hope for the future and for the now. This is Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was so no, no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eye, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. That is the future hope that we look forward to. But we can trust God that even in the now where there is mourning and crying and pain and death, that he is Lord, that he is good, that he has good things planned for us. His plans and his purposes will prevail. So look to the future, look to the things that are to come. And even in the here and now as we worship, as Yanni was saying, get your bodies into alignment, get, get your spirits into alignment with what God is doing. He is coming again.
church this morning out. Romans 12 says, I urge you in the light of God's mercies, in view of God's mercies, to present your bodies as living sacrifices. And that's what we want to do now. In the light, in the view of God's mercies that we've just been singing about, isn't, isn't that God's mercy we've been proclaiming? That he died, that he bled for us. In the light of that, we, we respond by laying our lives down.
Give it all to you this morning. Offer our lives to you, Lord. Because you are worth it all, Lord. Worthy, you are worthy, much more worthy. Then I've known
Father God, we just want to declare that, that you are good. Lord, if we look back to our lives, Lord, and in the darkest places we've been being through our lives, Lord, you've been there, Jesus. You've been there. Lord, your track record is perfect. Lord. You have always been there, Lord. Even when we thought you weren't, you were, Lord. Lord, if I think back to my life, when you've been in dark places, I've seen your face, Lord. Lord, I just want to say that in the dark places, I saw your face, Lord. You revealed yourself to me, Lord. You reveal yourself to your church when we need you the most, Lord. You are faithful, Lord. You will not fail us, Lord. And you will not let us fail, Lord. You will not. You will not, Lord. Your heart is turned towards us. And you will not let us fail, Lord. You will grab hold of us. You will lift us up every time, time and time and time again. And we thank you for that, Lord. You are the rock of our salvation, Lord. You are not moved, Lord. You are underneath us, Lord. And you lift us up every time, Jesus. Every time, that's what you do. <laughs> you come and fetch us and lift us up every time. Oh God, that's why we praise you. That's why we love you, Lord. And that's why we give our lives to you willingly. Because you know what you are doing, Lord. You know, Lord. So we want to again just surrender our very beings to you, Lord. Knowing that we are safe in you. You lead us. You guide us. You form us. You shape us. You make us new, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. Praise you, Lord. You are building something good, Lord. Your church, you are building something good. We trust you, Lord. And we thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, church. Praise you. <laughs> All right, the life group on duty, can they just quickly um, take up the tithes and offerings? And while they're doing that, um, just to remind everybody that there's no life groups this week. Okay, just to keep that in mind, no life groups this week. Um, oh, yeah, because we're having the leaders meeting. All right. As we're doing this, I just want to, um, let's just stay, let's, our hearts just stay prepared, okay? It's always this abrupt ending out of this wonderful worship, and you feel like, ah, you know, let's just stay there. When we prayed in the, in the meeting this morning, um, Sir Percy is going to bring the word today to us. I really got a picture of new bread being broken. You know, if you see this wonderful brown, white, whatever bread you like coming out of the oven, warm, and you break it up, and you see the steam rising, you smell the aroma. That's what's coming in the word for us today. So let's just keep our hearts there. All right. Fantastic. Okay. Um, all the kids for the kids' church, if there are any kids in here, could they just stand? Let's just pray for them quickly. And then they can leave. All the children. Fantastic. Father God, we, as we, as a body of Christ, Lord, reach out our hands to these children, Lord. We declare that they are precious in your sight, Lord. That you've created, created them fearfully and wonderfully, Lord. And Lord, we pray a blessing over them, Lord, that the seeds that are sown today would be fruitful, Lord, that they would grow in your spirit, in your love, in your wisdom, and in your knowledge, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, thank you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Fantastic. Thank you, Percy. Should I pray for you? <laughs> <laughs> Now, God, ach, Lord, we just align ourselves with yeah. you now, Lord. We align ourselves as your body of Christ, Lord, excited to hear what you want to give um, to us, Father, through the words of Percy in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning. I didn't hear that. I say good morning. Are you good? No, you are not good. 
It's like somebody wake up on the other side of the, the bed. I say, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you know, I get excited. Trust me. I know, I know all of you get excited as well. I want to say thank you for the church, the pastoral team, and all the friends, even the privilege. I don't see it as a right to speak to you this morning, the things of God. You know, I feel blessed, I feel humbled, I feel encouraged. I know that God will meet with us in a special manner. I know that. Do you believe it? I'm sure you came here with expectation, isn't it? You came here not because it's a program, because you love God, because you want to be different. And that's what I'm going to do. That's the thing I do best for the last 38 years. I was 17 when the angel of God started speaking to me. And that's the only thing I do. People say, what do you do most? I study, I study the Bible and study people. You see, you can't be really talk for God if you don't study those two. Because when I see you behaving, I want to know why you're behaving like that. I want to know. When I see you crying, I want to know why. You know, last week, our brother, our captain, him, spoke about being delivered from slavery and becoming a son. From slavery to sonship. I want to talk about how do you relate, how do you behave, how do you conduct yourself as a son? I want to hear. How do you conduct, how do you behave, how do you relate as a son, as a son of God, as a son? You can say even daughter, but here we don't talk about gender. We talk about the relationship. You see? Because some people are, 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 are not sons. They are sons, but who don't know who they are. They are sons who don't behave like sons. So I want to talk about sons of God today. The Bible says the, crea the whole creation is waiting for the manifestation. When are these sons of God going to appear? I believe it's now. Like Ian say, that the line is drawn. I believe it's now. And believe me, I'm going to provoke you to reaction. Believe me, unless you're not a son. But if you are a son, trust me, I will through God's grace. I'll show you the difference between a child and a son. I'll show you later. But let's go to 1 John chapter 5. But then I'm going to put it there. Maybe we're going to be reading there. It's going to be very, very easy for us. Look at this. If we receive the witness of men, say choice. Say it, say it with passion, say choice. The word if, it means you decide how things will go. It means you decide what you receive. Listen to me. The Bible says if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he has testified of his son. The word receive, it means lambano. It means to take something for your advantage or for your use. That's receiving. You take it for your advantage and for your use, for your benefit. He said if we receive the witness of men, God's witness is greater. I'm talking about the witness about the son. We talk about the son here. I wanted to see. I wanted to see in these few verses I'm going to read how much he talk about the son. It's, next, watch this. He who believes in the son. I want to watch what we talk about here. He who believes in the Son of God, he has the witness in himself. That's the reason I've said to people, you know, when you say something, people think you're arrogant. But you're not. 
Listen to me. Everybody needs encouragement, but I don't need encouragement. What do I mean? I mean even if encouragement is not there, I've got the witness in myself. I've got something greater. I've got something in me. I, I want you to see. I want you to see here. He says, he who does not believe God has made him a liar. That's why I'm going to challenge the lies people believe. It's a choice. I, I want to watch what we talk about. It's a choice. It does not mean, it, it does not mean it's a guarantee. Because you have to make a choice. Because you have to decide the course of things. You have to decide what is going to impact you. You have to decide what you take for your advantage. It says, because he has not believed the testimony that he had given of his son. We talk about the son here. We talk about Jesus. I want to watch. I want to watch how many, how many. Let's go. And this is the testimony that God yet given us eternal life. And this life is in the son. I want you to watch. It's not anywhere. You can't find it anywhere. It's all about sonship, brothers and sisters. We talk about the son. We know, we, we, we're not talking about, listen, we're not talking about what you can do. I guarantee you fail. We talk about what the son he have done. Look at it. Look at then. Let's go. He who, ah, Jesus, he who is the son, he has life. He who does not have the son does not have life. You can have religion. But do you have the son? I, I, I want to show you what you have by having the son. Then John tells us why is he writing this. Look at what he said in verse 13. He said, these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the son. Say son. Woo! Not everybody. That's the reason I'm not intimidated when people sometimes don't believe. Because I don't know what is in you. I know what is in me. The inside of the sheep makes the wool outside. I know what I have. I know who I am. I know whom I believe. And I was born for this. And I will die for it. That's what I believe him for. I love it. These things, listen to me. The Bible is not just written. The Bible is not a religious book. The Bible is written so that we can know what we have. I'm not talking about what, listen to me. I'm not, it's so that you can know what you have by having the Son. It's not something what you're going to have. It's already something which you have. But I know now probably it's not working for you. I'll show you how it will work for you. I'll show you why it's not working. That you may know whoo, that you have eternal life. That you may know. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Just watch what we read about the Son. What you have, the things you have, what do I have? I have got the witness. I've got the testimony. I've got eternal life. I've got it. Listen to me. I'm not trying to have it. That's why I say to people, I'm not pretending. I'm not trying to be something. I am something. When I accepted Jesus, when I believe in the Son of God, you know, I've got all sorts of, I was 17, I'm telling you. And people say stories, say this and this. But I'm standing because of what I have, not because of what I can do. You see, it's different. Not because of what I can achieve, but because of what I can ha what I have in the sun. What is this? Now, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. You know, the, trust me, I'm talking from experience, but this is my opinion, unless you convince me anyhow. I believe the greatest the sign of maturity, of understanding some, is the ability to pray. 
and get change and get answers. Why? Because prayer is talking to God. I'm not talking about religious prayer. It's very different here. I'll prove it to you. It's not how long you pray, how tense you pray. It's how you pray. He said, this is, listen to me, the most dangerous person is a person who can pray, not who can talk. Because prayer involves God. Prayer is the only address to God if it's prayer. I'm talking to you now. But listen to me, if I cannot talk to God, if I cannot prevail with God, I, I won't prevail with man. It's truth. If you can't talk to God, you can't talk to man. You won't change man. You'll be an entertainer. you talk grammar only. I'm not an English teacher. I'm a preacher. I talk life. Jesus said my words are spirit and they are life. He said this is the confidence. But, we, but there are few Christians who are confident. You know, you know, brother, under this, what are you doing under circumstances? Are you not supposed to be the head? Are you not supposed to reign? I know why. Because they don't know who you are. You don't know what you have. You don't know what the son means to be a son. He said this is the confidence. Can I ask you, is your prayers working? None out of ten prayers don't work. There are few Christians who can pray once and get answers. Some people, they've been praying for 20, 30 years in their answer, and they think it's normal. It's not normal. It's because of what you don't know. Watch this. Now, this is the confidence. If we ask anything, he hears us. Verse 15. Sorry, my 10, verse 15. I didn't. Yeah. Watch this. Then he said, Okay, sorry. It's coming. Coming, relax. Woo. Sounds varamie. <laughs> Thank you, my love. Have you ever found a tomato among oranges? <laughs> I found it. Some years ago, 30 years ago. I found a tomato among oranges. <laughs> and I say, what are you doing? This is mine. <laughs> and it's still mine. The husband of one wife. Woo! I love it. I love Jesus. Martin, are you there? Just 15, my brother. And we go, I feel, I'm, are you excited? I'm sure you used to me. I'm just excited, a funny guy. And if we know that he hears, listen to me. If you know that he hears, I, my daughter. Then you're the most dangerous person because you know what will happen. Listen to me. Just to know that God hears me. I know how things will shape. I know what will happen. I know. But some people don't know. That's the reason I'm as confident as I am. You think, you think I'm just pretty? I'm not. I couldn't be here for 37 years, 38 years still preaching if it doesn't work, Greenfield. If what I'm saying doesn't work, I couldn't be here. It's true, yeah, I couldn't be here. What am I doing? What am I doing? Still chasing, still having the sun. I want to show you something, brothers and sisters. Martin, as you put this, I, I want to show you something. I want to show you. Listen to me. All what the sun is, you are. All what the sun have, you have. But there are two things which I'm going to show you today, which is killing Christians, which is why you don't really experience, you're going to, I'm going to show our prayer work. It's so simple. It's so simple. It's not, the, it's not this religious tense prayer. But two things. Did, did you notice that the sun must be in you, but you must be also in the sun. Did you notice? The Bible, did you see what it says, verse 14 and 15? It says, 14. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, not in me now. In him. You know, you know let me tell you. Maturity is when you live in Christ. The Bible says when a man is in Christ. Let me tell you, Christ is also a place to live. 
I want you to know. Christ is also a place to live. He's God. He's in you. You will see that nine out of ten, you will never have something practically which is not in you first. You must first have it. You must have that. Listen to me. What is it all about something? What is it all John talking about? Remember what I said? I said, now that you are delivered from slavery, we are sons. But most of us, we are sons in theory. But not in practice. We don't enjoy it. We don't experience it. But you will experience it today. You have got it already. Listen to me. Listen, we're not talking about, your prayers are not going to work if you are praying, if you are trying to pray to have something. If they're not going to work. I want to see the difference. I'm not trying to, to get something. I'm not trying to get approval. I'm not trying to please God. I've got to read something. That very something is like a SIM card in a phone. You can have such an expensive phone, but if it doesn't have the SIM card, it's not connected anywhere. That very thing, God put something in me. That's the reason I'm confident. That's the reason my prayers work. But I want to show you what is prayer. Why prayers must work. Why when you are going to pray, it's going to work. I know maybe you're not used to get answers. Sounds, yeah? Test and see if God is good. Galatians 4. You know, I, I'm touching what I'm touching, but I want to show you something. It talked about that we were slaves. He didn't preach, but, but there's a point I want to show you. So that when we apply this thing, so that you understand who you are, how to behave as a son. So that when I will challenge you, then you don't get offended. Because some of you are like that. You pretend you're Christian. When we start saying, let's do Christian things. For me, brother and sister, it's not what Christians do for me. It's what I do with my Christianity. You see the difference? Some of you, 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 you want Christian to, Christianity to do something for you. No, it's what I do with my Christianity. You see the difference? Watch this. But when the fullness of the time yet come, God sent forth his son, say son. Remember, say it's about son. I'm, I'm trying to show you why you are, you are supposed to be the most powerful son of God. He said, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under what? Under law. You know those bondages, those cords, but watch what was it for? To redeem those who were under the law that we might receive what? A son. Watch now. But you receive the adoption of son by accepting the son. You get it now? When you accept Jesus, automatically you are adopted as a son of God. But something happened, which really now is the essence of God. Watch what happened. This, this, is, this is the real thing. And because you are what now? You see that? Because you are son, God has sent forth what? The spirit of his son into hearts. Crying. You get it now? You see it? Because you are son, it's not the outward. Like what I was saying. Is the inside of the sheep that makes the wool outside. You must have the spirit of God. Let me tell you, the spirit of sonship is the spirit of prayer. You can't cry, God, hear you. The spirit of prophecy is the spirit of sonship. Without this spirit in your heart, your prayers cannot work. Without this spirit in your heart, you cannot change. I will prove it to you. I will show you that you can have immediate effect. You can have immediate change. I'll show you, I'll prove it today. Then you know whether you're a Christian or not. You know whether you are religious or not. I'll show you the difference. Listen to this. He say, because you are son, because, say, because I'm a son. Did you know that the spirit of the world also? Did you know that? 
You know that the spirit of the world also, the Bible tells us, I'm not going to read that, but there's the spirit of sun. Some of you are so alive when you're in the world. But you see nothing when you come here. Do you know why? It's because of the spirit within your eyes. This is not judging. This is truth. Watch here. Crying, Abba, Father. Read my pen. Therefore, you are no longer. This, this is good. You know when they were singing and all I said, oh, but this is interesting. How did you, my brother Peter, he, he's in the same spirit. I'm no longer slave to fear. Why? Because I'm a son. Listen to me. Then a hair of God through Christ. My tell the story. We can stop with this one here. I've got the point there. But I want to show you. Remember what I said? I said already we've been talking that you are not a slave. You are a son. But now you must behave and do the thing sons do. Then I'm going to start preaching now. I was just giving you introduction. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to say thank you for this time, for this day. I want to say thank you, Lord, for meeting with us in a special manner. I want to say thank you, Lord, that now we are sons. Father, we will do what sons do. And help us. Because we have got what it takes. We have got the spirit. We have got eternal life. We have got the evidence of God. We have got the witness. And Father, we take it today so that our lives can change. Father, I believe that we will ever believe and see this, their prayer will begin to work. Things will begin to change with immediate effect. I declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Jesus didn't tell us to preach and expect nothing. He said, cast devil, heal the sick, do things. He didn't just say, go preach and this good talk and, and all those things. No. But now, the rapper is going to hit the road. Because now, I, I, I've made you understand that now you are son. But it doesn't benefit you unless you practice it. Amen. It doesn't benefit you until you know how to walk in it. Let me show you one verse before I show you my application. Proverbs 2, verse 2. Maybe let's read for, yeah, it's fine. Look at here. Look at here. It says, so that you may incline your ear to wisdom. I just wanted this last part, but it's fine. It says, and apply your heart to what? Come on, let's read again the last part. One, two, three. And apply your heart to? Let's read again. One, two, three. And apply your heart to? Who we'll do the application? Mickey. If, you know, beauty therapy, if I give you some chemicals and I say, Mickey, if you apply this in five days, it's going to change your face, apply three times a day. Will it work if you put it in your shelf? That's what babies do. That's what children do. Adults apply. You see the difference? A child doesn't apply, you obey. But mature people, they apply. If you want a reaction, apply something. It's not God who applies. The Bible says, apply your heart. You apply. If I give you something and say this is going to change your skin, this is go even, even doctors give prescription, and most of you, you come here, you don't want prescription. Ah, he's judging us. He's I'm not controlling you. I want you to change, and you are going to apply this thing. Otherwise, you are wasting your time here. Why do you go to doctor then? And he give you all the prescription afterwards. You say, I don't believe you. You start praying. You are a hypocrite. It's true. That's hypocrisy. Apply. Listen to me. He say apply. Listen to me. Children don't apply in kindergarten. Don't apply. They cry around. They beg. They want something to do. That's why some of you are babies. Because you're looking for somebody. Remember what I said? You're looking for somebody to pray for you. For what? Maybe you come here with, the, with, with, the, with the, some people, they go to the meeting with the, a list of 
basket like this. I want this. I want the car. I want the house. I want the truth. I want no. And some of you are disappointed because it doesn't work. Because God now is, he expects you to be a what? A mature person. You know, I've got children. Even my daughter, no, no, no. She doesn't ask me, she knows how to make tea. Say application. She doesn't ask. Trust me. She knows how to make it. But some Christians are so ignorant. That they're almost like beggars. You apply, brother. Let me tell you, things may not change unless you change them. God expects us to change things. God expects us to do something. Remember what I'm saying? I'm saying the difference between a baby and a and 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 mature person is an application here. Yeah. A baby don't, don't apply. They cry. They obey. But others apply. They make things happen. They cook. They know what to mix. You see the difference? Otherwise, you may never be healed. I'm not blocking your healing. It was working when you were a baby, isn't it? Because people, they can lay hands on you. But now you're supposed to be mature. You're supposed to be making babies, isn't it? Some of you have, you have got babies, but you still cry like babies. You ever find the, a baby crying and the mother is crying? Then this, what happened? Who is a baby now? <laughs> apply. Listen to me, apply. If you want difference, if you want effect, if you want reaction, apply. Say apply. I'm saying if you want a change, if you want a reaction, look, apply. Put something. Do something. That's what Jesus said. He said, in my name. He said, this is the confidence we have in his name. That if we ask, he's not going to ask. I must ask. I must apply it. So then who's holding you hostage? It's your ignorance. That's why I'm confronting you this morning. I, I believe the greatest deliverance which ever is needed in this earth is from ignorance. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you what? Why are you looking for help? From where? From people. I'm not saying people mustn't help you. But then it means you don't believe what you have. It means... It means you don't believe enough what you have. That you have got what it takes. You can pray heaven down. You can, listen to me, uh, you, you might not have anything. But the Bible says whatever you ask, ask. This is the confidence. If you have got it, then apply it. Use it. And I'm going to give you a good example. Remember what I said. I said you cannot have a house physically before you have it in the spirit. I don't, I don't see it. Unless you see it. Unless you, remember what the Bible say. The Bible said before we can practice to be son, before we can cry up our father, God put his, the spirit of son in us. Then I start behaving like a son. I start thinking like a son. I start acting like a son. I start doing like a son. I want to show you a guy in the Bible. Maybe he can identify with you. All of us. Maybe you can identify with you. I want to show somebody in the Bible who did not have the, who was a son, but who did not have the spirit. But what happened when the spirit of a son came to him? You know what we call the prodigal son? Do you know, do, do you know the prodigal son? Do you know what he did? He said, my name is Jimmy. Give me, give me, give me. And his father gave him. Off he goes. Am I right? And, 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 and what happens? Because I'm going to show why prayers don't work, why Christians are not maturing, why you find you are not enjoying Christianity, why you, listen to me, off he goes, you know what he does? We told two things. He wasted his mind riotous with harlots. Is that right? And where did he find himself? In the pig style. Is that correct? Then what happened, my then put, let's see what happened to this guy. Ah! himself. No preacher preached to him. But when he came to himself, can I ask you, are you really yourself? Or are you something? Do you know when I stop having stars, all these celebrity, all these things, then I start really understanding God. Because I realize that I'm good enough like anybody. 
I'm a son enough like any person. I don't need to compare to, I don't need to feel inferior to anybody. I'm good enough. Because of the son, because of Jesus. Look at what he says. Look, look at this. How many of my, what? My father's hard servants, you have got bread enough and to spare. Let me tell you, my, my friend. There is God, you have got enough for you, even to spare. Jesus talked about abundance. There is enough. But the problem is not you, you are not yourself. You are copying somebody. Even some of you are walking in things God didn't even call you. Maybe because you like it. It's not God way. Because it's not necessary. I will prove it to you that it's not necessary. Watch here. There's, listen to me. There's enough. There's, let me tell you, there's enough. Nobody. You read X 2, 4. He said nobody was lacking among them. But I will show today why we lack, why we struggle. You are going to see it here. He knew. He said when he came to him senses, I believe that spirit came to him. He said, what am I doing here? Does son behave like this? That's the thing. He said, how many of my father, my, my, my own dead? Remember, we cry up a father. It means something awakening. It's my father is your dead. He's loaded. How many of my father, seven, you have got enough bread to spare? And I perish here, I can't pay bills. I, I don't have something to eat. Remember what I said? That their sons who don't enjoy this, they are living right here. And they think it's normal. They think it's spiritual warfare. It's not spiritual warfare. Ignorance is not spiritual warfare. Not everything happened is from the devil. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something which might shock you. Some people say why good things happen to, to good people. Because good people make bad choices. Simple. Not all, not all but nine out of ten, good people make bad choices. And you are not exempt here. Watch here. Did this boy make bad choice? Hello? With, with the good resources? How many of you have noticed that when we pray for you, the elders pray, Peter is crying the whole night, that God bless you, get job, and suddenly now you think you want to control you. You are out of your senses. You come here, we're crying, here the elders are crying, are fasting, are doing all those things, and suddenly you've got few cents. Now suddenly they want to control your life. That's how prodigal people think. He said, my father, you are not dying. You know, I'm gifted. You know, I've got all those things. Give man, I go. Wrong choice. It does not mean because you are working, you're educated, you've got a job. Now you are, you are dead. Now you are mama. Wrong choice. Your mother is your mother. Your father is your father. The Bible says, honor your mother and your father. It will be two things will happen. It will be well with you. You will live long. Look at how young people are dying because of prodigal spirit. Wrong choices. Not only young people, even big people. I've made wrong choices. I've made wrong choices. I've made. I'm not preaching as an angel. I'm a son who has prodigal also, but not knowing it. Because I made wrong choice here. But I'm a son. There. I perish here. Go, Martin, let's go. Listen to what he says. I'm talking about application now. Did anyone preach to him? Did anyone disciple him? Remember, the inside of the sheep makes the wool outside. When he came to his senses, I want you, I want you to see. You are going to see that when you, when you, when you, faith is of heart, when you, when you are in the true spirit, I guarantee you, I don't know about your experience. There must be an immediate reaction. This is what is prayer. I want to show you, this is, this is not the prayer as you think. This is not prayer as religious as you think. This is what I call prayer. You know what is prayer? This is, this is not those prayers of tens of, 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 of whatever outward. This is a heart. He said when he came to himself, he talked to himself. We're not told whether he talked verbally, but the Bible says he talked to himself first. And say, how many servants of my father 
and I'm behaving here as a servant, and those that are enjoying the right of son, that's prayer. You see what I, what I mean? But here's the thing. It's not going to help you to know it unless you apply it. You see the difference? It's not going to work. Trust me, it's not, you can cry, you can roll here, you can do it. It's not going to work. It's not even necessary. This is what is necessary. I will arise and go to my father. I will arise and go to church. I will arise and go to life group. I will arise to go home. Let me tell you, brother and sister, God is in the church. God is building the church. Your security, your safety is here in the church. It's truth. It's truth. Even a local church like Connection is truth. We are, this is a branch. This is a branch of the church. We're not the tree. We are the branch. It's true. He said, I will arise and go away home. I will arise go to my father. That's what is true repentance. I want to see now the change. I want to see what he says. Look at here. This is what I was saying. Read. He says, and this is what he said. He will say to his father. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your what? You see the difference now? He's not coming to get now. He's coming to save. You see the difference? You see, you, you, you see the change? He's coming now to apply. Now he's a mature son. Now he's coming to contribute. Now he's looking for something. Can you see the difference? He's not taking, he's not, Jimmy, Jimmy, give me, give me, give me. No. He's no longer as I will. Is you will now, Father. That's what he says. I'm trying to show what is prayer. What does it mean to pray according to God's will? You cannot pray according to God's will unless you've got the spirit of a son. You cannot pray. You're still thinking we're trying to control you here? You're far. You, you still don't see that this is for your good, for your advantage? You see? Let's read. Wow. And, and then what happened? Did he talk about it? Did he tell anybody? And he rose and came to his father. Come home. I'm calling you. This is what I found out. Two things I found out, Peter, and all my brothers. Two things which is killing Christian. One is being in the wrong place. Not in Christ. And secondly, wrong relationships destroy people. The language is not the same. Let me tell you. Listen to me. The language is not the same. The thinking is not the same. Trust me. Two things. Two things which is killing Christians. It's the wrong place. Finding yourself in wrong places when you're supposed to be in church. When you're supposed to be in life group. And wrong relationships. We see with this. Immediately, when he came to his senses, nobody told him that was wrong. Left it. No, no need for deliverance. Even me, I believe that mature Christians don't need. They know what to do. Two things. Wrong place. Remember, say Christ is a place. If you are not in Christ, you are in the wrong place even if you're in the church. That's why you don't hear what I'm talking. That's why you see the other side, which is not even there. Two things. Wrong place, wrong relationships. Is, the, is written in your Bible, don't be unequal with unbelievers. What are you doing there? What language do you talk with them? You ever been seated with unbelievers and suddenly they start talking about your pastor and also, yeah, even me, I don't understand that guy. You see? You fallen. Wrong spirit is in you. Two things. I say wrong place and wrong relationships. And let me tell you the worst thing that can happen. Martin, go, go to that other verse. He, he went to his father. Go, Martin, we know all this. I just want that other verse by his father. And then you see what happened? Did his father ask him to apologize? Did his father ask him to pay back? Hello? Did his father say, I don't have enough? Did his father say, you're no longer my son? Did his father say, we must first fast seven days? Then why are we not enjoying it? Listen to me. They, I say, Lord, if it's like this, why are we not enjoying life? Why are we not enjoying? Let me tell you. It's all about inheritance. 
You know, I'm studying now the Bible. I'm looking even right through. I was reading yesterday where God came to Jacob and all those things. Do you know what he said to him? He said, I'm, I'm, I'm the God of your father, Abraham. He didn't say your grandfather. He said your father, Abraham. Isaac and you. It's about inheritance. Inheritance, you don't need to earn. You don't need to work. It's your right as a son. You don't earn it. You don't deserve it. It's yours. That's why there was no, there was nothing for that son to do. To please his father or to earn more. He even get more than he went. I know, I know you could be, since I was preaching, you could be feeling a prodigal son. That's why I say things are going to change. All what you need to do is allow the spirit of the son to come to you. That's enough. All that you need to do, you don't need to cry, you don't need to sleep, sleep this night, you don't need to do all those things. I'm not saying you don't need those things, but all what I'm saying, you need to awake as a son. Listen to me, you just need to awake and say, I'm a son, and leave wrong places and wrong people. What are you doing with the pigs? Simple. It's, it's, it's truth. It's the gospel, it's truth. I don't write the Bible, I just interpret it. That's, that's the reason you're struggling. And when we talk here, it sounds like tongues. Because you've been talking something with your friends yesterday in the morning. You see? It, it, it's not the same. I found that the language is not the same. The atmosphere is not the same. Everything is not the same. Do you know when I meet with my brothers? When, I, when I'm with my 10, when I'm with Peter and all those things. Do you know how safe I feel? Do you know, do you know how in God, do you know how strength and just to, you, you get what I'm saying? But some of you are allergic to Christians. Your best friends are not Christians. It's true. And Christians are your worst friends. Your best friends are not Christians. And you still wonder why your prayers are not working. You've been praying for 25 years. That must stop today. You know, there's something really, really, as, as, as I come to an end, there's something worse in this life, which I've been praying and repenting even this morning, even last night. I'm going to ask us to repent of this. If we are going to repent today, if you, believe, if you have seen that you, you are son, is this thing we are going to, to, to see, my friends? Go, go. Okay. Go, go on. This is the thing. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard the music and dancing. It's amazing. Have you ever noticed that when God starts moving, this starts getting refined? Have you ever noticed? That music rises. People, they start dancing. It's amazing. Have you ever noticed it? There's no revival. I've never seen revival where there's no music. I haven't seen it in the scriptures. Watch here what happened. So he called one of his servants and asked, what does this mean? Why am I not told? I'm the elder son. What kind of music is this? Is it pop? Is it Afro? Is it jazz? <laughs> and he said, <laughs> your brother has come because he, your father received him safely and sound and he killed a fat cow. What? Read. But he was angry. Brother, this is the worst thing. Honestly, I felt touched yesterday when, when God showed me. That you know why my children are not enjoying? It's because of lack of fellowship among the brothers of the same father. Wow. It touched my heart. When I see Christian praying against other Christians, Christian, when I see Christian talking about other Christians, they are own brothers. Sons don't do that, brothers and sisters. God said when we love each other, the world will know we belong to him. When people are resenting bitterness, hatred towards other Christians, they don't greet them. They feel awkward when they're next to them. Brother is wrong, brothers and sisters. When people call other people by names, color, there's nothing like that in Christ. It's wrong, my brothers and sisters. It's wrong. If we are going to repent today, brothers and sisters, we repent of this one thing, of judging other people, of despising other people, of thinking we are better 
When I see Christians fighting for position, it's not about you. It's not your business. The church is not yours. We are not our own, the Bible tells us. Why anger? Why compete? Why compare? I'm not better. I'm not talking here because I'm better. I'm talking here because God loves you. I'm talking here because God wants you to mature, son. I'm helping you to know how to apply, not to compete with your brother, not to fight your brother, not to resent your brother, not to measure yourself by your brother. That's not success. Be content in yourself. Be happy that you're part of this church. Be like the prodigal son. Come to your senses. Come to save here. Come to contribute. Don't be mistress here. Even the chairs are not clean. Clean! You can clean also. Who's going to clean? Are we not all the church? Yeah, they're not even packed, right? Why don't you come pack them then? Are you a journalist? Are you a commentator here? No, we, we sons, we brothers, we family of the same dead. Hello? Same spirit. This really touched my brothers and sisters. Can we stand and ask God for grace? I realize probably that's why we're struggling. How can I feel good with that people who are not part of my house? How can I spend so time with people who don't talk our language and I can't spend time with one Christian? I'm angry. I'm disappointed. They don't recognize me. For what? As long as the father recognizes, are you not happy that you're in the house? Are you not happy that we are son? Please, I, I, I'm not accusing you, but I'm saying it's sad when you hear churches, preachers, Christians. Even now with so many, all what's happening in the world, do you know what Christians are busy doing? Fighting each other. I'm telling you. Instead of, instead of seeking God, the Bible says this is the confidence. Just think of that. Whatever we ask, can God stop this pandemic? But it's not going to stop until he stops this one among us. The first one must get rid. So the spirit of son must replace this other one. Am I right? Must respect. I'm not saying you are that. But if you are that, I'm not judging you neither. I am saying Jesus said the world will know that we are his people. The power of God will come. Did you see what happened with the, the, the prodigal son? All his needs were met immediately. Am I right? All. He had food, he had all things, house, he had got even ring it in there before because he came to his senses. But his brother was still mad, thinking he's doing the best. Can I ask you, before I pray, that you harm yourself. Please don't say I say this. If God speaks to you to any area, don't harden your heart. I'm not saying you have got hatred, I'm not saying you are bitter, but you, you know your heart. You know where you are. You know your attitude towards these people. You know how you relate. Remember what I said? is how we conduct ourselves in the house of our father as the son. That's what makes the difference. Is how we relate with our brothers and sisters. That's those two pillars, I guarantee you. Nothing can stop us. The Bible says even the devil won't touch us with those two. How we conduct ourselves in my father's house and how I relate with my brothers. Those two I can see that nothing, no need cannot be met. Nothing. We lay hands here, you are healed. Things happen. But if you are not right, let's come to our senses and stop thinking. It's not, it's not, I'm not a son because I preach. That doesn't make me, God is happy now, you bless me. No, I'm a son. It's just that maybe I've got something to do, am I right? But I'm not more than anybody. So can we pray? Ask God to, Check your heart, brothers and sisters. How is your attitude as a son in the house of God? Are you still there like the prodigal son, doing your own thing, going your way? Dying, suffering, going down? And how is your attitude towards your brother? You pray, and I will pray later. I, I'm praying for myself as well. You pray first. Humble yourself, then I will pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. As I stand before the altar, Lord, I want to humble myself before you and I ask for forgiveness. Father, where I harbor resentment, bitterness, accusation towards any brother and sister, I ask for mercy. Father, what a shame that the 
the sons of the same father could not love fellowship and enjoy their day. Father, forgive me and change me forever, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Trust in that, your prayer. I want to pray for the spirit of the son. I want to pray that every need you are going to see my God, our God. You will do it. Not based on your behavior. Based on your sonship. You will do it. You will do it. You will give a testimony. I know what I'm talking about. He said this is the confidence. We are going to ask now. Whatever need you had, whatever challenge you had, is going to submit to the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray now. Can you lift your hand and surrender? You don't need to, con you don't need, like the prodigal son, you don't need to pay anything back. I'm not saying that. You don't need to, God is pleased with you because you're in Christ. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to say thank you this morning that you can show us what it means to be sons, what we have in Christ. Father, we have got your witness. We have got eternal life. And we have got right to pray. You said we can ask anything. Father, here are we as your children, as your sons. The world is waiting to see. Father, I pray that every single person in this building even those who will listen to this podcast, that, Father, you can prove to them that it's enough what they've done to accept Jesus, that they're your perfect sons, that they, 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 they've got right to, to, to life, to health, to inheritance. Father, we see that healing is inheritance. Blessing is inheritance. Father, we don't need to pay anything, but we have got enough even to spare. Father, I pray that no one in this building lack any good thing. No one lack what is rightful of sons. Father, I release it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, bless them. Father, answer those overdue prayers. Lord, let those visions come to pass which you give them. As they walk as sons, as they conscious of the Son of God. Father, bless them. Give them peace. Give them joy. Give them confidence. Make us confident Christians at home, at work, in the community. In such a way people say, why these people are so confident? Because we know our God. We know our Father. And I thank you, Lord, that in this last day, that's the spirit you are pouring, the spirit of sonship, where we can cry, Abba, Father. Lord, bless us. Bless your people. Lord, make us one. And forgive us where we despise each other. Forgive us where we fight, resent. Forgive us. And help us to be a family. Help us to understand that we are your children, whom you are well pleased. Father, we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you blessed? Are you encouraged? Say hallelujah. Say, Abba Father. I believe that's how God wants to be known these last days. Is Abba Father. God bless you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, my brothers. Thank you for being patient church with me. God bless you.
Amen. So I know here's my homework. My homework is in this week, every time I get a thought that's contrary to the fact that I'm a child of God, every time that I hear something or think something or feel something, what I must do is I must go to the Word where it says who I am and speak that Word until I'm convinced. Yeah, that's how we get to maturity. So I want to challenge you and ourselves. And if I get my, if, if my, the people around me start doing that, what must I do in life? Say, hey, <laughs> you're now believing the lie. Don't believe the lie. Get back to the word and be, get back to the truth. So let's encourage ourselves, encourage each other to grab hold of the word and who we are in Christ. Thanks.